let you know about transformations of functions in general and then transformations specifically of this, okay? There's, there's sort of four values, right? Just as we had with any kind of a function, the only difference here is, you know, where we would have had before f of x, let's go back here and write it down somewhere, all the things you know about transforming this function, the way you did before, you know, when you put a number in front, when you put a number in there, when you add something on the end, the only difference is now we're looking at a specific function. Instead of f of x, we're talking about sine of x or cos of x or whatever else, right? For now, we're just talking about sine and cosine. And we're, you know, if you put a number in front and you put a number inside here and maybe you shift this this way um, by something, whoops, by over 2 or something like that, and you add a number on the end, that's what we're looking at doing now. What do each of those things do? So hopefully you had a sense from what we did last time of what those values do. You could maybe write it down here. This would be good. What that does, what that does, and what this one does, and what this one does, okay? What do each of those things do? What do they change about the function? What does A change? What, is, what kind of a change does it make to the graph? First of all, is it vertical or horizontal? That is vertical, right? It could be a vertical, well, we can go over here and you can see it visually, right? If you change the value of A, it, uh, what do you call that? Vertical expansion, or if I put it down in here, it's a vertical compression. It could actually also be a vertical, what else, if it's negative? Reflection. If it's negative, it's also a vertical reflection. I can see that you can. It's hard to see the gray original function, but you know, if if it's a positive number, it's just the the maximum points get higher. If it's negative, then the maximum points become the minimum points. Right. This point that's the high point there is now the lowest point here, and so on. So that's what a does, which we theoretically know that already. That changes what you call the amplitude. So this is vertical expansion, compression. The specific word for this particular function is it changes the amplitude. Uh, maybe I'll just write it two words. Amplitude change. I'm not going to write down specifically what values do what, right? I mean, I assume you know that if it's smaller than one, what happens? If it's bigger than one, what happens? And if it's negative, what else happens? What does the second thing do here? The value in here, this this B value here, what does that do? When you change Y equals F of X to Y equals F of B times X, what does that do? Horizontal expansion or compression, right? Horizontal expansion, compression. Technically, if it was negative, it could also be a reflection, right? So I should have put over here um, reflection. And I should put reflection here as well. So if we go back over here, we're not going to do too much in terms of these, of reflecting them horizontally, because it continues infinitely anyway. So reflecting this horizontally, you don't always need to do that. But if you change the value of B here to some other number, it if you make the number bigger than 1, it compresses it. You know, the period becomes smaller. This is changing the period of the graph. When when the value is 1, the period is how much? What, how does it, from one point to the same point again here? It's 2 pi. I don't think this is going to work, actually, especially if I do that. Where did my other point go? I lost today. Um, what happens if I make this a 2 here? Almost a 2. What does the period become if I make it 2? It's compressed it, so instead of being 2 pi, the original one is a period of 2 pi. This one is a period of pi. If you put a, if you put a 4 there, what's it going to be? What's the period now? How long does it take for one chunk of the graph, one cycle of the graph to happen? 
it takes a it doesn't take a quarter because the initial is two. This is what messes people up is because originally it's not one, it's two pi. So you have to think about that that it's it's gonna be two pi divided by whatever that number is, right? Two pi divided by this number gives you the period, so it's, because it's originally 2 pi, it's compressed down to a half pi. You could make this negative if you really wanted to. If you actually made it a number smaller, then it would, it would elongate the thing and the period would be more. If you put a 0 0.5 there, now the period becomes twice as much, 4 pi. If you made it negative, it would actually turn it around so that it did the opposite. It's, uh, we don't look too much at horizontal reflections with these, so I'll leave that out for now. Uh, what about the other two values? Oh, whoops, we should go back and uh, write that down first. I'm also skilled at trying to get that back where it was. Uh, so we have, what do you call this then? It's a horizontal expansion, compression, or possibly reflection, but this is changing. What does it change? What, what aspect of this? It doesn't change the amplitude, it changes the period. So that's the period change. That changes the period. The other two are more are simpler, right? Because they're just they're not expansions, compressions. They are translations, right? The one that I have in green there, that C value, that is the horizontal translation. And then the one in pink there is the vertical translation. I have to think about what those are called here. If you look at the graph here, the C value is changing. It's hard to talk about it being shifted horizontally because you can start with no horizontal shift and you can find a value that gives you the exact same graph in there. It matches up again. You can shift it and it'll match up with itself for various values. So it's hard to talk. You don't really talk about that. You talk about the phase of the thing. You talk about the, that being a phase shift. If you shift it by pi, I will try to land right on pi here. I picked a scale that was not very useful for what we're doing, but oh, I know. But as soon as I take the pen away, it's hard to know which way it's going to go. And this is making for some riveting video, but that's shifting it by pi, okay, 3.14. It's shifted the, the maximum points. This maximum point is now where? Where did it go? Over here, right? If actually, if that's x plus 3.14, that maximum point went over here, right? This uh, this point right here is gone right there. They've all shifted to the side. This is called a phase shift. The phase being, you know, when are the when do the maximums occur? When do the minimums occur? Okay, when you talk about the phase shift in physics, you might have used the word phase to s describe if things are in phase or out of phase. Those two waves right there, those two uh, functions are out of phase, right? Because if we go back to this, those two things are out of phase because the maximums of one occur where the minimums of the other ones occur. They're completely out of phase. This is called the phase shift. That would be a good thing to learn. It says it up here. Okay, phase shift, phase change, I don't know. That's the C value does that. And then the last one, you call it, what color did I pick? The last one, you call it vertical displacement. Vertical displacement. Displacement, what does that mean? If you say out of place, right? You're changing its place, you're moving it. You use the word displacement in in uh, physics to mean the change of position. Okay, vertical displacement here just means you move it up or down, right? When we get to modeling things with uh, with trig functions, displacement, because if this represents something, uh, some ro something rotating and you shift it up or down, that's just displacing the entire graph, right? All the positions are have changed there. If you make this into a three, well then you got sine x plus three. It changes this right here, this middle line. Look at that as the reference point. Don't look at the bottom as the reference point. Look at the middle as the reference point because the middle, this kind of midline is at zero. Now, 
We're going to try and write some equations for this. So if you could try right now, each of these has a couple of changes. So it's kind of combining some things together. Try and write some equations for this. I would like you to write one that is, you're going to have to think about what the values are, but write one sine and one cosine. Write one of them using sine and one using cosine. Because there's, there's an infinite number of equations you could write for each one. Do at least one that's sine and one that's cosine.